Hi, today I'm going to be doing a shout out to two of my favorite content creators. One, Sister Earth. I'll leave her channel in the description below. If you like The Grateful Dead, you will love her channel. And the second one is Rosie Murphy. Uh, if I had to describe her channel, it would be eclectic. She does everything from cooking to uh, cinematography. Uh, she's crazy. She's wacky. She does hangouts. And it's always a good time. Both of these ladies asked me basic newbie questions. What do you buy to get into this hobby? So today I'm going to show both of them. We're going to start out with pencils. There are so many on the market and what do you do? Buy cheap pencils to start out because you don't know if you're going to like the hobby, you don't want to invest that much, or you're going to start out with a better set so that you make things that you like. When you make things that you like, you might get more into the hobby. So it's a 50-50 on that and probably up to your budget. I have a wide array of pencils and I'm going to classify them in three types wax oil and the last one is although it's a coloring pencil it's a watercolor pencil and they all do different things so let's begin my favorite type of pencil is the Prismacolor it's most colorists favorite go-to pencil because it's a good quality pencil not only is it a good quality pencil but it uh, allows you to do a lot. There are two types. This is the Prisma Color 150. You don't have to get the 150. You could start out with the 72. It all depends on your price range. I like the Prisma Color 150 because it gives me everything and I can basically do all those beautiful coloring blends, all come from the 150 set, and I don't have to worry that I don't have a pencil. I can tell you this, I've got multiple sets. I always keep the box um, because the box is a really good quality box and you can always put different sets of pencils in them, which I do do. Where I store my Prismacolors, and let me get out one of my books. Is here. and I keep them in a binder. This is so that I could see at a moment's glass, glance what pencils I need to restock because Prismacolors, one of the things that goes uh, with Prismacolors is being able to get individual pencils in stock. You could do this with many different sets, uh, but Prismacolor refills are usually about $1.50 depending on where you're going to go. The best place that I found was Dick Blix online has the individual pencils. I wouldn't touch these pencils on Amazon. They're very expensive. Uh, if you go to Dick Blix, uh, I guess it's dickblix.com, you will have, you can get every color stock pencil cheap. And as you can see, I have the whole 150 set. I have a second set, and it's endless. And I also, what I do is I number each slot, which goes with the corresponding, let's see if, if you could see this, my, okay. Okay, you could see the number right here and the name of the pencil. One is in, I believe it's French. I could be wrong about that. And one is in English. So it makes it very easy. This is pencil 118 and I have slot 118. Now over here, I've got a whole bunch of pencils out. So that's why I have them missing from the book. But you could see that there are some missing here. I know which pencils get lost, um, what color I should be panicking and looking for, and I also could tell, like, over here my peach, this is light peach, 
look how small it's getting. So I'm going to get a little nubby soon on this and that I have to go and order another one. So that's where keeping it in a book like this really helps. But you can keep them. You don't. Have, this is something extra. This is not something you have to invest in at the beginning. Um, the Prismacolor box. This one's empty. Comes with very nice trays that you could do. That you could set up the same thing in here. It just I can't do the numbers and my pencils go everywhere. So that's why I like to take my Prismacolors out of it. What I do do is uh, sets that pencils that don't um, come in nice cases. I could put them in here. And while these are out, I should show them to you. These are Sudi Styles. Um, this is a very inexpensive set. I'll, I'll put the names and uh, where you can get all these different pencils in my uh, description. The Sudi Styles is a wax pencil. It's a harder wax. What I like about this is, well, first of all, it's a good starter set. It, I think it has 120 pencils. It's a nice starter set for beginners. Not my choice that I would be coloring a whole picture with them. But if I do run out of a color or I need like an in-between color that Prismacolor doesn't have, and which is very rare, um, I can always dig up a pencil in my suities. So, and it comes with a lot of them. So you have a whole array and no, they're not in any sort of color order. Shame on me. And it does, they do have colors that Prismacolor doesn't have. The con, the bad part about this set is a lot of the pencils don't go by the color. It's always tested first. These colors on here are all different, but when you're coloring with them, they become very, very similar. Like these two, although they have a paint shade difference, when you're actually using the pencil, it's not the greatest gradient. Um, but they blend okay. I, I've done full pictures with them. They do blend, just not as good as the Prismacolors. Okay, just to talk a little bit more about the Prismacolors and what I like about them. I'm going to just grab any pencil. You can do a really nice gradient and it doesn't take much to effort to learn how to do it. And that's of course only one layer. And you get a nice gradient in there. You know all the pictures with all my different shades? Well, sometimes I don't pick up a new pencil. And I'll just create a new shade by adjusting the uh, heaviness of my hand. Or how much. Okay, another set that I have is the Farber Castile. And I love this set. I have two of them. This is my newest one. As you can see, they're barely touched. These are also available in stock, so if you use one pencil from here, you can go and buy that individual pencil. You don't have to worry about having to buy another whole set. So this comes, their largest set is the 120 set. It comes in a nice tin. And my other one, I, my daughter has it upstairs. My other set are in a, a case, and they're labeled the same way. They do have numbers on it, the same as the Prismacolor. And this is Hooker's Crun, <laughs> Hooker's Green, which is, we all know my friend Hooker. So again, they have their names, you get to know the names. With an oil pencil, here's some of the differences with an oil pencil for real newbies that don't know. When you're coloring with it, let me just take this out of my way. So here we have an oil pencil. And I'm doing a fast gradient on it. 
you get a lot of richness. It's very easy to get your full color richness on the darker side much easier than with Prisma. Prisma takes a couple of layers. You can see that this is one layer and it's it's nice and dark. And when I want to go lighter, I can get that light gradient. What Prismacolor has over this, I mean, of course, you can have beautiful pictures with this. This set is expensive. Um, where a Prismacolor, let me see. Here's another Prismacolor, and I want to blend. So I'm going to blend in with this pencil to get a nice... These are my skin tones. When I want to do a darker skin tone. And you see you have a nice blend and it doesn't take much to blend. Once two layers get on there and you just keep going, the creaminess of the pencil, you, you'll feel those two wax layers just blending with each other. And I can add multiple layers on it. But it's a little bit different with the oil. And I'll show you over here. I'm going to put a purple on top, a pink on top of the purple. You don't get that absolute blend. If you can think of how this blends, this mixes with each other. But imagine two pieces of cellophane paper. One is yellow and one is blue. And you put it over each other, it's going to turn green, of course. That's kind of the way the same, the way the oil pencils are. You're layering the colors. So while they don't, it's harder to get them to mix. They do mix. It's easier to just layer your colors on. So it takes a little bit longer to get used to. You can achieve, uh, most professionals do use the oil when they're doing for many reasons. What I like about it is I can mix the oil and the wax. They blend really nicely. So if I want to put a pink layer on top of the brown, I get a whole different look. And you can kind of see, I'll try to zoom in on it that the pink is really laying on top of the wax. It's not so much blending in with the wax. And this gives a depth, it makes things look rich and deep. So that's, just because it lays on top doesn't mean that it's a negative. It's what you want as far as a look. Okay, so those are two sets I highly recommend. Derwent's are nice pencils. They're a very good company. It's a high-end company. And what I love about the watercolors, I'm going to demonstrate right now. I'll take one of them. This is, I think, the 72 set. Yeah, the Derwent 72. Really, this is all I've needed. I don't do full pictures in this, although you can. But these are my fun pencils. Say I have a wide open background. Sometimes it's hard to get a really smooth gradient in a large area. Smaller areas are easy. Larger areas are much more difficult. So what you can do is your bottom layer. And the pencil goes on like any other pencil. It can be treated. You don't have to do anything else. You could treat these just like your any other pencil. But what's nice about this is you get out a little water. Very little water is needed. Your brush should be lightly dusted with water. And look what happens. They act just like a watercolor. And when this dries, okay. So once this dries, it only takes a few moments. A little bit damp. Not much. Almost done. I could do a second layer. 
So if I wanted to darken up, I would. I normally I would let it dry a little bit more. But I could do a second letter and look how rich the color is. And it changes. So always test it before you use it on the paper both ways, wet and dry. Because it does change color so much. See? But now what I can do is, let's see, take a lighter color. I'll take one of my yellows. And this is a Prismacolor. And I could actually color right over the watercolor. And it gives me a smoother background to work with, especially in a larger area. And you can vary vary the degree of uh, gradient much easier than if you're taking a pencil and doing it. And I can go over the whole thing. You can do it dry. It will blend with your colors dry. So this is why I think of this as my fun coloring set. darker yellow and these two once it goes on as a watercolor it does not blend into your other color so if I wanted to add a glow onto this blue I can add a glow without worrying about it totally blending no matter what I do, the, bo the bottom layer stays without the blend. If I took this and I went over this, which is my other Prisma, you could see the colors blend and I get sort of a light yellowish brown. I can't do that over this at all. Choosing a book is probably the second most important thing to your pencils. I'm very picky about the papers that I use to color because I spend a lot of money on my pencils and I don't want to waste the wax or the oil that's in them. Some of the qualities in books that I look for is the thickness in the paper. And you can see in this book, the paper is quite thick, stiff, hear the difference and then I look at the artwork is it overly detailed I love this book I don't I colors beautifully um, some of the cheaper books I'll show you in comparison very cheap paper listen remnant of uh, computer paper. If you can see, it's very difficult on some of these cheaper papers to get really good coverage because the tooth on the paper or what grabs the wax is very shallow. You could do it. You could see that I've colored in it. The color's nice. But if you really want quality, I would stay away from uh, Creative Haven books and to look for some of the other books with better quality. And you can see on uh, Joanna Brassford books are very good quality. You can see the paper quality is good. Some of my other favorites that you can get with it well, Floribunda is another one that has really good paper. And this is, this paper is so good you can actually frame this. So, 
that is what I look for in a book. The thing about coloring books is some of the books that have really good quality paper in it are just as expensive as the cheap ones. So I would go through YouTube before buying a book and look at some of the reviews for a book. Uh, the, those who are doing reviews for the book are very uh, into paper quality because that's what people are looking for. Uh, stay away from the Creative Haven books. Now look at this one. This is another feature I like. There's a perforation that I can take this page out without destroying the book. It just bends and I can take it, tear it off, and frame it. And the paper is nice and thick. The last thing I'm going to talk about is some of the toys I have. Things that aren't books and aren't uh, necessary, but they're nice to have. Blending pen. The blending pen will break down the wax and it only really works well on um, wax, not the oils. It doesn't do much on the oils. And you can see you get a, a very smooth consistency. So you lose those little white marks on it. You just have to remember to clean it until you don't get any of this because you can transfer color to color on it. It doesn't work well on the pet on anything else but the wax. See? I'm not getting much of a difference on any of the things except for this. So this is another nice thing to have as a newbie. As somebody who does art all the time, I don't use this very often. Just some really stubborn um, colors that won't blend down as much as I'd like. Then I may pick this up. So it's a nice little thing to have. I suggest having a very fine tip pen. I don't know if this is ultra fine. Okay, you can see the tip. And this is good to do eyelashes. It's a little thick for eyelashes, but eyelashes often get lost in the mix when you're using pencil on them. They become foggy and you really want them to shine through. So an ultra fine, this is too thick. This is my really thick one. Some people like the lines, and you can go over your lines after it draws right over the wax. Let's see if one page in here that I did do. So I may add a little bit more in the eyelashes. Another thing that I found that makes a difference having one of these. We're not getting any younger. Our eyes aren't getting any better. And sometimes it's just a teeny dot that throws you off. And you can get some really good detail work. Say I wanted a color right in between two lines. I wouldn't use that up to my eyes. I would always take the magnifying glass to it. So this is another thing that's nice to have. Another thing you're absolutely going to need is a pencil sharpener. This one came with my Derwent uh, facial pencils. And I want to talk about, this is a hand one. I have several different types. This one's nice and sharp. But they get dull, okay? When they get dull, they'll dig into the core 
and to keep slightly twisting the core, which puts a lot of stress on it. And because it's stressed, it can crack. That's why if you're going to do this, I do recommend a an electric pencil sharpener. I have one from Panasonic. I've had it for years and years. It does its job. I get a sharp, much sharper point and it's much less stress on the core. But you can use these. Now the last thing I'm going to show you, which is an a almost an absolute must that you have to get, is one of these Posca pens. You know all those little highlights, the white highlights? If you want to get something that's sharper, this is where you're going to do it. See my line in there? It just adds a little bit something. To it. I have a whole video on how to use this properly, so I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But this is really very important, especially when you're doing eyes and you need a nice sharp white uh, highlight in them. You must have one of these. It's also available on Amazon. I will leave the link in the description. I know this was a long video. I'm going to end it here and I will see you guys in the next one. Ta-ta. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell.